In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a room, we'll look at some different ways of displaying geometry within the viewport. We'll also look at um, using the multi-cut tool to create insert edge loops and how to re-topologize our topology, as well as how to finalize your model by uh, freeze transformations um, and also deleting the history. First of all, let's set up a proper project a folder structure. So we'll go up to File, Project Window, and I'm just going to create a new project on my desktop, and I'll call it Room. And with that, I'm going to save my scene, so Save Scene As, and it takes me directly into the Scenes folder inside my room. And I'm going to use ASCII uh, Room R01 and save that. So now what I'm going to do is open up my settings and to do that we can go to window settings and preferences preferences and inside of settings I'm going to change it from centimeters to uh, meters. Now when I do that and I scroll out you'll notice that my viewport the grid there gets clipped so to edit that, we'll go into our perspective, uh, select the perspective in the outliner. So if you haven't got the outliner open, just click on this button here. And we can go to the control A, and that brings up our, our attributes for our camera. And under near clipping plane and far clipping plane, if we edit those, um, so at the moment it's set to 100, so because we've changed it to a meter, we can uh, increase that. And now it's a thousand. So if we zoom out, we get to see it. The other thing is though, if I create an object, um, and I'll just scale this guy up manually for a second, and zoom out, I start to get these sort of black lines and uh, the rendering doesn't quite understand where, where, where it's meant to be rendering and so forth. So a similar sort of thing, but in the near clipping plane, if we change this to say just 0.1, then that's going to clear those um, artifacts up. Um, we can even like you know put it into the positive and so forth and get a a bit clearer, like so. Let's now create a uh, a room, and I want to make it a specific size. So I double click on the uh, poly modeling tab cube. Um, and that brings up the options window. So at the moment it's 111. Uh, let's make the width 3 by, say, 3 by 3. And the subdivision is just all set to 1. So I'll create a room at that size. Now at the moment you'll notice that um, it's created in the middle of the, the scene, but I want to move the uh, origin or move the object so that it's sitting on top of the grid. So to do that, let's quickly just move the pivot point. And to move the pivot point, uh, we press D on the keyboard. And then if we click anywhere, it will set the pivot point to that space. Press D again, and then we can use the W key and move that pivot point as well. So to make this perfectly line up, I'm just going to press spacebar to bring up the quad view um, and go down to the side and you can see it's not quite lined up on the side view. So if I press X, that will mean it will snap to grid and then when I scroll down, when it snaps, it will snap right onto the grid like so. All right, just a few little things about how uh, geometry gets displayed within the viewport. At the moment we can see uh, the cube. Um, now if we want to have a look at uh, say we're going to get rid of a couple of these faces so I'll grab those two faces and just delete those. Now on the inside you'll notice that um, you see all black. Now that's because it's indicating what the opposite side to where the normal is um, is uh, rendered in black. So if you want to remove this sort of uh, double-sided um, non-lighting on both sides, then you can go up to lighting panel and tick 
two-sided lighting and now you get two-sided lighting on, on the panel. Um, the other thing that you might want to have a look at, I'm just going to put back, turn that off, keep it on the default, is under display we've got polygons and we've got face normals. So well, let me try that again, press G just to reactivate the same tool. Um, it's a bit hard to see at the moment because we're so large, but if I go into polygons, face normals, and go to uh, normal size, then I can make these a lot bigger. And now we can start to see them. All right, so I'm going to just bring them right up. All right, so you should be able to see these lines coming out of the faces. So this is the, the normals um, and they indicate which way the face is facing and tells the renderer um, what to render basically. Okay, so if I wanna change the, the look of the background, if I hold down uh, Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, I can uh, cipher through and have a look at different backgrounds like so. I might even just remove the grid as well so I can see things a bit more clearly. Okay, so here's our polygons. Now, what we can do is we can actually go up to mesh display and reverse those normals and then our normals are facing in the opposite direction like so. So there you can see them in there. Now I'm going to turn those normals off. So polygons again and just face normals and get rid of those two. The other thing that you might want to do is uh, make it so it's not double sided shading. So to do that we go into the render status and so we're in polygon shape, control A to the attribute editor and we've got double sided here so I can just turn that off. And that means when we're on the other side, we'll actually see through the polygons. So that can be sort of handy. For us, it's not that big a deal because we've already cut out um, some of the polygons in our walls. All right, so the next step is to create a window and a door. To do that, I'm gonna use the multi-cut tool, um, just like the insert edge loop tool, but we're gonna use multi-cut. And if I press control, on the keyboard um, and scroll over my polygons then I can see like a, an edge loop going in so I'll click one and two and so I've made this sort of door and then I'll make the top of the door like so um, and on the other side I'm going to create some windows so I'm just going to go one two and three so I've made the space for the uh, windows and the door and now I just need to use the uh, extrude tool so control E I'll select both those faces control E and just oops minus one try that again and there we go that's better so uh, control E just extrude it out and if I want I can also delete those faces as well. So I'll do it for the window as well so control E but this time I'm going to create like a frame for the window so before I extrude down I'm going to just extrude in a little bit and then G is going to reactivate the last tool which was extrude push it in a touch and maybe I'll do that one more time make a little Loop. So I'm just extruding uh, with the middle cube, so it's just scaling it all together. And G, I'll just extrude that out as well. So there you go. I've made like a lip, and I can even make like a really thick wall or a or a thick thin wall, like so. And yeah, I'll delete that face as well. So I'll save that again. So file and save like so. So this time what I want to do is just optimize this room a little bit. So I'm just going to 
go up to display and bring up head up display um, and I'm just going to bring up poly count so there's poly count um, and you can see that uh, at the moment we've got 55 faces uh, we probably don't need that many faces and as part of a good topology is not necessarily having edge loops running all the way through objects that are not necessary. So what I'm going to do is uh, clean up some of this uh, topology. Um, so what I need to do though is maintain uh, four-sided four um, faces. But I can easily do that um, going through. I'm going to do it to the doorway first and make sure I get the one on the inside there, like so. And to delete the edge and vertices, I'm going to hold down uh, Alt-Delete, sorry, Control-Delete. And so that's got rid of the, the faces, but now with the same tool, the multi-cut tool, um, which is, yeah, I'm going to come in and just slice into those corners like so which then retains a four face although I need to fix the the roof up as well because at the moment I've got an extra extra edges in there so I'll go one two three and as well delete those faces. So that's now a quad up the top and this is a quad one, two, three, four. Same with these ones, one, or except for this one is broken up, but that's okay, we can fix that as well. So before I do that, I might just uh, cut into it like so and do the same on, on here. Just being sure to um, Make sure that you, when you do cut it, that you're getting the vertices and not creating additional vertices. So cutting into the vertices, like so. And I'll just clean that up as well. So grab these additional edges. Control delete again, and now it's just a matter of the floor, and that will do for the floor as well. So I've got four. So oops, as you can see, I didn't use control delete on that one, that's better. So there you go, I can see it. There's no extra vertices across there. All right, so instead of having 55 faces, I've now got 31 faces. So it's a bit more efficient. Um, if you're doing something for games, that would be more appropriate as well, especially if it's uh, mobile. But yeah, having the minimum amount of polygons with the proper topology and, and faces um, is the best way to go. So before we uh, finish up with this model, We'll first uh, rename it, so I'll call it Room Geo. And what we're going to do as well is if we look at the Attribute Editor, you'll notice that we've translated the object in the 1.5, so that's when we moved it up. So what we're going to do is freeze transform, and we can also, if we come down here, we've also got this input all these history nodes. So this is our first creation of the cube and then our, all our extrusions and so forth. So what we want to do is get rid of that. We're going to clean up the file. Um, so first of all, we'll uh, go up and go modify freeze transformations. So let me just show you what's going on. So notice on translate white, we've got 1.5 modify freeze transformations and our options are all uh, connected here if we want to reset any of these windows we can go reset settings and we'll go trees transfer uh, tree freeze transformations so in doing that it zeroes everything out um, but it doesn't get rid of the the history so to get rid of the history we go up to 
file, uh, and, sorry, edit, delete by type, history, and that will clean out the file as well. So now we've got a, a nice um, clean file with good topology um, ready to be used as in our scenes. So a good way to work is to set up um, a different scene for each object and then bring those objects in and use them separately. So what we can do is we can go file, export selected. So I'll go export and we can save it in our scenes folder or we can go up to asset and I've already got a room up there. So I'll just call it room, geo and export our object into there like so. Now, to bring objects into your scene, you've, you've got two options. So option number one is just to go file, oh, let's create a new scene for starters. We'll go file, import, and we can import that room directly into our scene like so. Um, and it's changed to centimeters, so it's got a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Or what we can do is go File and go Create Reference. So I'll come into here. I'll just reset the settings on that. And I'll grab that room. And I'm just going to make sure that our settings are all the same. Yep go reference like so and now we've got this reference object and you can tell it's a reference because it's got this sort of like diamond there so what this means if I save scene as go back to our scenes I'll call it rooms rooms scene So what this means is if I go into my original room asset, like so, and if I make an edit to this, so for instance, I might just take that face and make the roof really high. And when I go save, if I then go into my scene folder, you can see that I get the updated file. So that concludes our tutorial on creating a, a room.